started. Well, I went shopping this morning. That always counts. It's not just when you're at the at the site working. Uh, last week we finished up the air extractor, uh, but uh, which is great if you have you know you have to get the fumes out, the overspray and stuff. But if you don't have clean air coming in, you can blow dust all over your new paint job. That's a bad thing. So what I'm going to do today is build a simple box uh, that'll hold a, a filter and then the tarp will go around it to kind of seal it in so the air is being sucked through that and then out the extraction. You'll see more what I mean when I you know, set the tarps up. So that's the plan. Nothing, nothing fancy. Um, <laughs> just a box with uh, some buttons in it that are long enough to, to staple the, the wire mesh to, and then uh, the the filter will go right on it. This one will just need a dust filter since it's just pulling the air through it, um, clean air. It doesn't have any of the nasty stuff that the, the paint will will have. So the extractor gets the charcoal and the dust, and this one just gets the dust filter. Um, yeah, so, so now I think um, I'll try and start putting some tarps up and uh, see how that goes. kid and you build a fort in your living room out of bed sheets and chairs. That's very much what I feel like right now. Really I built this whole fort in my living room. No girls allowed. Cool. It's 
I think he's big enough. Um, with the car and the rotisserie, uh, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, it'll be mostly sideways. Anyway, uh, I have another one, uh, another tarp to go on the floor, uh, especially for the sand blasting. That'll make picking up all the extra little, all the sand that falls up so I can reuse it because kind of, that's kind of the point. Yeah, you know, I, I still have to clear out all of this and um, I'm going to attach the, the sides to the wall, um, things like that. But uh, it's up. It's scary. <laughs> Alright, so yesterday I missed a package delivery, so I had to spend an hour to go downtown and pick it up, but it was worth it. I have a pack of, uh, what are they, 4032 uh, aluminum welding rod, and this, this is aluminum silicone, silicone aluminum, which is not used for welding, but it's used for TIG brazing. Uh, TIG brazing can be used on uh, cast iron, which is what we're going to experiment with this morning. Uh, if you'll remember, several episodes ago, uh, I almost dropped the engine because the mount of the that I, the uh, generator mount that I was using to hoist the engine was uh, cast iron. I thought it was just steel, and it uh, it cracked. <clears throat> the the eyelet cracked off of it and uh, dropped the engine a little bit. It wasn't too bad, but uh, I'm going to see if I can weld the uh, TIG braze that back together because if I can't, I need to order a new part and I'm going to put in an order sometime this week. So that's the plan this morning to experiment. That didn't work. <laughs> it was uh, worth a shot. Uh, I can't seem to get the um, the the rod to stick to the to the base metal. So um, simply, I, I I'll order a new one. Um, it, they're not that terribly expensive. Um, it's definitely worth replacing rather than having. A, your generator fall off at some point. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe a better welder than I would know how to do it. Um, but for me, yeah, that didn't work. We're gonna keep the experiment train running this morning. This is the original jack uh, to the car. Uh, cute little thing heavy metal has this pin that switches back and forth so you can jack it up and down switch it around 
goes the other way. Um, uh, originally, it was red. So, looks like it got spray painted silver at some point. Uh, there's some other silver on the car. Wonder what was going on there. Anywho, um, I've not sandblasted before. So, um, I thought before, you know, I tackled a car with uh, a thin metal, I ought to do something that has a little more beef to it that I can't screw up. I thought this would be a good place to start. Um, there's no real, I don't, I don't really see anything I can screw up with it. Um, I'm going to start off, uh, my blasting material is uh, actually, it's not really sand, it's, uh, it's glass beads. They're really tiny. You're supposed to run at about 40 PSI, I believe. Um, so the glass bead, beads don't explode when they, when they impact. It's supposed to be a slow, gentle, safe way to sandblast. So uh, I think I'll try and get that set up. I'll use the, the blasting tent I have set up and, and see how it goes. Well, all right, I learned a couple things. It's gonna be slow. And it's, <laughs> it's gonna be messy. But, I know you can still see bits of red on there, but uh, it's not rusty anymore. It's shiny, well, relatively. Um, there's still some paint that's like really stuck on there, still really stuck on there deep down in the pits and things, but uh, it's very nice. Um, I'm gonna paint this up and, uh, and we'll, we'll see what it looks like after that, but uh, I'm pretty impressed with that. Uh, I think it'll do a good job on the car. It's just going to take forever. Well, have a look at that. I'm pretty happy with it. It, uh, I uh, sprayed it with uh, primer and then uh, went over it with this red, just out of a spray can. There's uh, two things that are red on this car the, uh, the jack and then the, uh, the shroud that goes over the radiator, the, the fan, cooling fan on the radiator that's going to get painted sometime too. So it wasn't enough to warrant buying, you know, special paint when a rattle can will do. I'm very happy with this. Um, when I, when I did it and the details started showing up, I could read the numbers on it and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, my favorite uh, mechanics quote, I won't tell you who said this, but uh, when an obnoxious 13 year old is asking for parts over and over again, someone gets mad and says, what do you want me to do? Eat the old parts and shit new ones? Well, this is about as close as you can get to that. Take the old parts, sandblast them down, nice shiny new metal, you hit it with paint, it's really easy to paint after that. Um, and you got what looks like a new part. So while we're working on red stuff, I thought I'd get this out. Um, this is a, a shroud that goes over the, um, the fan that goes in the, the in front of the radiator. Keep your hands out of it. This is painted red, the same color as the jack. It's the only other red thing on the car. Um, this is going to get soldered on. You can see, it looks like there were three points where it was soldered on in the past. So we're going to replicate that. We have a solder and soldering paste. I have no idea where this came from. I know it uh, came from the States, but it looks like it's a thousand years old. This is kind of fun.
Uh, soldering. Let's see if I can get this thing open. Yeah, there's some in there. Not a lot. So the flux will clean the metal and then uh, allow the, the lead, well, this isn't really lead, to flow um, and make a good joint. The trick would be to do this without uh, destroying the radiator, without uh, heating up other, other things too much. So we're going to try and keep the heat on the steel and let it work its way down into the, to the radiator through the steel. And the flux is already starting to pop. Steel changing color. You don't want the you don't want the flame to, to melt the the solder, you want the the, the metal to. Right now it's melted but it's not flowing in very well. I can get it in there. Let's let that harden and see what happens. Going with these others. It seems like it's sucking the solder right inside, which is good. It's what we want. back over on this one. I'm still not happy with how it, how it went. Yeah, that seems a bit better.
pull down and see if it's stuck. Right now it looks hot. Looks solid. solder that didn't stick. A little too dirty. It seems to be on there pretty good. Excellent. That's all we need. Just to stick in place. Now I can uh, clean it up a bit and then uh, I was radiator in general is in okay condition, um, it wasn't leaking except for the, except for down here. There's a, a real old-fashioned looking ball joint. Let me try and get you over there. Ball joint. That's not the right one. Ball valve. It's all loose and stuff. Uh, I think I ordered another one. But that so that'll be replaced so it doesn't leak. Um, but yeah, it looks like it just needs. Cleaned up, fresh coat of paint, and uh, it'll be nice. So that's how you put on the, the shroud. At least how I do it. I don't know how someone else might do it. Bubble gum, maybe. So yeah, I'm doing a bunch of oddball stuff. Um, there's a good reason for that. Next week, uh, I'm going skiing again. I know, my wife's obsessed. So uh, I don't want to, and I know the sandblasting is going to take a long time, and I don't want to be in a position where I leave uh, the entire chassis uh, bare metal, totally exposed for a week while I'm out playing. So um, I'm doing all this odd stuff, which is kind of fun. It's, it's different. After doing the metal work for so long, it's nice to do something different. So I'm going to play with the steering wheel this morning. Um, when I first picked it up, it had this on it, and when I when I grabbed it for the first time, it felt weird. It felt too thin. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason for that. Um, besides, this is just ugly. <coughs> um, <coughs> normally, this has a nice plastic all the way around it that has little bumps in the back for your for your fingers. <coughs> um, this has been all that plastic's been removed. It was probably cracking and uh, they just chipped it all off. Better chipped off than uh, and all cracked. So uh, what? No there's a replacement wheel, but it's, it has, it's wooden rim and aluminum uh, spokes. And I don't know, I don't like them personally. Uh, I like the original style. Uh, so I'm gonna do my best to keep that. What I'm doing is, uh, I picked up this, uh, what we'd call it, tie line in the theater. Um, this is just, what is this, 2.5 millimeter um, black nylon uh, cord. And uh, you see I, I've started over here. I'm just wrapping it around so it gives an extra 5 millimeters <coughs> to, the, to the thickness of the, the wheel. Um, when I'm done with that, I'm, I'm not going to put this back on it because this looks like it came out of the 70s. I need like a, a disco van with shag carpet all on it. So um, I, I was on Amazon. They have some nice leather uh, steering wheel co covers, like natural leather, and, and then you stitch it up uh, by yourself. So hopefully I can order one of those. But uh, for now, um, since I found this at the hardware store, it was surprisingly difficult to find um, a black tie line uh, in the hardware store. Uh, they had lots of other colors, but I wanted black in case you know it's showing through at the seams or something. Um, yeah, so I started this. I started going around here, but I don't really like it, so I'm going to take it off and, and do something else there. So that's what I'm working on. Something fun.
I realized yesterday I never showed you the uh, the after picture with the uh, with the twine the the tie line all in place. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, once it's covered in leather, it'll uh, it'll feel right. It uh, it just beefs up the the feeling in the hand. Well, that's an important thing, you know. When you that's your interface with the, with the car, you feel the road. You can it's it's an important feeling. And if it's if it's not right, it's not right. This this would be a lot closer. There we go. I just cleaned up. Must be Friday. Oh wait, it's only Thursday. <laughs> well, tomorrow I'm not working. I have uh, something else I got to do. I'll show you a video about that. But today, I uh, I didn't film it, but uh, I fixed the last two little rust spots. They are about that big uh, in the footwells. There are some bolts that uh, holes had rusted out. So I got that tacked up, uh, welded. Uh, now I've, I've pushed the car behind the curtain. And it's done. <laughs> At least it feels like it. Can't see it anymore. Can't see the work I need to do. Uh, I've also made some space in the garage. I have uh, these two bays that are nice and clean now. Uh, about to go skiing. Uh, so I don't want to start any major works until uh, I get back from that. Let me show you what's going on in the in the tent. Got a little bit of room on each side to, to move around. And this uh, rotisserie is going to make a huge difference when I'm doing this. I'll probably just pull my chair in here and just uh, twirl the car around as I sandblast. <laughs> it's going to be messy, I'm sure. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the space how it turned out. I don't know if I have enough uh, fresh air supply. Um, it's about the same size as the exit. But the exit's powered and the entrance isn't. It's probably... Uh, there's probably some sort of formula like you're supposed to have twice or four times the fresh air inlet as the ex exiting but I don't know it does suck the the, uh, the tarps in a little bit when I crank it up but uh, I can always make another another little box like that if I need to here I can while we're here I don't know if you can see it very well little spot right here that I w tacked up this morning. Uh, same on the other side. They were really hard to get to. I couldn't reach around the back very well. Anyway, that's enough for today. Um, I'll tell you about my adventure tomorrow. Tomorrow. If you like this video, click the like button below. If you want to come along on the ride as we complete this project, click the subscribe button. If you want to make sure Google reminds you every time there's a new video, click the alarm bell. Your support is very much appreciated.